What's up guys, Top Tier Yu-Gi-Oh here, I'm Antoine Steele, and I just got 7th place at the Charlotte, North Carolina Regional. I'm going to give you guys a quick deck profile on what I used. I decided to play PK Fire because I felt like it was the most consistent deck, and at the same time it has enough plays to be able to play through traps, and then I can lock down opponents with Beatrice, Fogblade, things like that. It's got a great Monarch matchup. And you can also go into F-Zero, which really wins the Cosmo matchup too. So it's got great matchups all around. It just really lets you play around your opponents to the best of your ability. Three Terra Top and one Tok Tom board. That's pretty standard. Really helps you get into free, easy Dantes. One Tour Guide for the same reason. For the Burning Abyss, I played three Skarm, two Seer, and one Graph. Those six are all pretty standard. Then I played two Farfa, two Alec. One Cow Cab, one Bar Bar, and one Livet. I chose this lineup because I wanted to play a lot of Burning Abyss so I could go into Beatrice really consistently. The whole idea with this deck was to summon Beatrice and Fog Blade. So I don't think any deck can play around that really well. So I like Cow Cab for bouncing back row, Bar Bar for game, which happened a lot. And then Libic's really good for playing around Beatrice because you can't summon other Burning Abyss monsters while you have Beatrice on board. So now these four, this is really the main difference I played because a lot of people play three Far from one Alec. But I think that Alec is better right now because against Monarchs, you can use Alec to negate Edia, Eidos, and then if they tribute your Beatrice while Alec is material, you can negate that Monarch's effect. Whereas Farfa doesn't do anything against Monarchs, it doesn't do anything against Cosmo because it doesn't affect the ships, they can just tag out when you target the pilots. It's good in the mirror match, however Alec's also good in the mirror match because you can just negate Beatrice. So I felt like I was more worried against Monarchs than any other deck because they have more outs to Burning Abyss, so that's why I chose two Alec over the third Farfa. For the Phantom Knights, I played three Boots, two cloak, and two gloves. Most people only play three boots, two cloaks, and one gloves. I chose two gloves so I have a higher probability of milling a Phantom Knight with Dante. And then gloves is also really the only one you want in the graveyard because with gloves, you can send cloak to the graveyard, you can send boots, or you can send a, uh, a fog blade to bring back one of the other ones. So that's why you want to play more gloves than anything else. Well, except for boots because obviously, if you draw boots, it's the best one to draw. You can just special summon it and then go into a rank three. And then finally for the monsters, I played three Maxis. For the spells, I played three Twin Twister. I was actually playing two for a long time. Then my boy CJ told me to play three. He plays Card of Demise and I didn't want to lose to that deck. And so I added in the third one. It helped against him. And it really, I didn't play any Card of Demise, but it helped me in pretty much every matchup against Cosmo, hitting Cosmojos, hitting Call of the Haunted. I opened triple a few times and it wasn't even that bad. You know, just blow up back row, scales against pendulums. It was really good in all of my matchups. Then I played two Max Change 2. Once again, I wanted to make Beatrice and Fog Blade, but then adding a Dark Law on top of that really, really keeps other decks from playing the game. If you go against Monarchs, they can't add anything to their hand. You're banishing all of their stuff. Against Cosmo, Dark Law is an out to ships because you can just attack over them and then they don't get their uh, graveyard effects. And so Mass Change 2 is also really good, especially going first. And then finally, one Raigeki, one Reinforce of the Army, and then one Foolish Burial. Those are all pretty standard. For the traps, I only played Triple Fog Blade and then Solemn Warning. And I drew Solemn Morning only one time all day, but I was able to stop a Pendulum Summon for four, and so that was pretty cool. I ended up losing the game anyways, but... And then Fog Blade was just, in general, great in every matchup once again. Just being able to negate monster effects, really keeping your opponent from getting over your boards. For the extra deck, Triple Dante, two Beatrice. This is the best card of the format, I think. It really lets you play around all of your opponent's plays, being able to get any of your, any of your Burning Abyss monsters from your deck at any time. It really helps you adapt to situations. Next, I played two Break Swords. Breaksword is really good for forcing back row because if your opponent has one card set, maybe two, and you summon Breaksword, they have to respond to that because if they don't, you can just pop their back row, then get back your Phantom Knights and go into a rank four. So it really forces your opponent to use back row before going into your real play, such as your Beatrice, your Dark Claws, and other things. One Dark Rebellion Exige Dragon, one Levier. Levier is really good for making plays out of your banished zone because all your Phantom Knights banish themselves. So Levier helps you make those plays. You can get back a, um, a Boots to your hand, special summon a banished Phantom Knight, Special summon the boots and then make another, make another rank three. So it really helps you go into F zero a lot more consistently. The MVP of the side deck was definitely number twenty Giga Brilliant and then Digital Bug Corbage. What Corbage does is you can detach two material from Giga Brilliant and then overlay Corbage on top of that, and then you can detach to target one defense monster your opponent controls and shuffle it back to their deck. This is really good against Monarchs because its prime has to be summoned in defense. You can shuffle it back to the deck. So that's the most efficient way to get rid of it. Against Cosmo, they know you're gonna summon F0, and so they're gonna summon their monsters in defense so you can't kill them with them. When they summon their Slip Riders, their uh, Land Walkers, their Pilots in defense, you can just shuffle them back to the deck and then avoid those graveyard effects. And then even in the mirror match, they're gonna summon their Beatrice in defense mode. 
you just spin it right back to the deck. So Corbage came up in most of my rounds and really sealed a lot of games for me. And then finally, F-Zero is the last Xyz monster. This card won all of my Cosmo matchups, every single one of them. I summoned this card every single game against Cosmos, and it's what won me all of them. And then finally, for the Beatrice targets, I played one Virgil and one Dante. I didn't summon Virgil at all, but I did summon Dante in a lot of matchups. Just being untargetable and then having 2800 attack is really useful. And then at the same time, it lets you draw through your cards and then trigger Burning Abyss monsters in your hand. And finally, one Dark Law for the mass changes. This card won me so many matchups. Mass Change 2 was very good through most of my rounds. I did side out Mass Change 2 in probably most of my game 2s and 3s if I was going 2nd, but going 1st, I would side in the 3rd one and that would really help me make Dark Law and shut down all my opponents. For the side deck, I played 2 Ghost Reaper Winter Cherries. This was probably the worst card, not because it was bad, because of what I went through to get this card. I didn't have any at the start of the event, and so I had to go through, I went table by table looking for this card so I could side 2 of them, and then I finally get both of them. I don't even play any mirror matches for a long time. When I finally do, he goes Reapers me. And then I still beat him. And so I'm pretty pretty upset with this card right now. But it's it's pretty decent because if you resolve it, you should win the game. But it doesn't guarantee that. And that's just what happened to me. Like, you can play this, banish three Dantes, and still lose. It's good, but not amazing. Two Flying C for the mirror match. Like Ghost Reaper, I didn't draw this either. I didn't draw this. I didn't draw anything for the mirror match, really. Two Artifact Lancia. This is probably the MVP of the side deck. I played five Cosmos, and this really came in handy in all of them. Like, I think in round, in round, in round seven, I was playing against Cosmo, and then he activated Dark Destroyer targeting itself. I chained Artifact Lancia. He couldn't banish his Dark Destroyer in that graveyard effect. And that, that ended his whole turn, because he'd already used his normal summon, and he couldn't do anything else, really. And then in another round, my opponent tried to use Cosmojo. I chained Lancia, and then he couldn't banish my monster, and he couldn't activate his monster's graveyard effect. Lancia came in so much. It's also good against Monarchs to keep them from banishing Pantheism and Prime. Two Valor for Monarch. I actually also sided in against Cosmo if I was going second. It came up a few times. It was okay. I only drew it once. I drew it. I drew two of them actually against Monarchs round three, and I forgot to use them. So, I mean, it would have been good, but I just forgot to use it that game. One Mass Chain second. I sided this in pretty much any time I was going first, because if I can set up Beatrice, Fogblade, and Darklaw, I don't think any deck can play around that. That's just auto win. And that happened a few times too. Next to Iron Wall. This was arguably the worst card of the side deck. It was really good against Cosmo because it kept them from making plays. But it also kept me from making my Phantom Knight plays. All the Phantom Knight cards banished themselves from the graveyard. And this stopped me from doing that. So I wasn't a, too big of a fan of it. I had it against Cosmos and like we pretty much just we couldn't play the game for like 4 or 5 turns until we Twin Twister did. And then once he did that he was able to make some plays. And l luckily I can make plays too but it wasn't enough at that point. I'd probably not side this again. Two Stygian and Dirge for Pendulum so they can't make their rank fours. Pendulum isn't an inherently bad matchup. However, if they can Pendulum summon three to four monsters at the same time, you can't respond to any of them with one Far for one Alec. They're always going to go into Abyss Dweller first. And then once they summon the first Dweller, you can't do anything. So if they have three or three or four uh, Pendulum monsters, if you Far for one, it doesn't make any difference. Now you've used your Beatrice, they'll cast out your Beatrice. So this helps them from making those annoying rank four plays it really helps you win the pendulum match. I didn't draw it though, and I lost the pendulums. One emptiness for going first, I didn't draw it though. And then finally, one mischief for the gnomes. I played this in round eight against Noah Green. In the mirror match, it's really good because you can banish it from the graveyard to reduce the levels of all monsters in your opponent's hand by one, and that's even after the normal summon set or anything. Those monsters are permanently reduced by level one until the end of the turn. And so against Burning Abyss, it pretty much means they can't do anything for the rest of the turn. Absolutely nothing. You can't do anything with rank 2s. Some people cite Sky Calvary Centuria. That's a rank 2 that helps you get over Beatrice. But at the same time, there are also other plays you can make. Like Noah Green, he summoned 3 Burning Abyss monsters from in hand. One was Rubik, and he just went to Virgil and spun my Beatrice back. But either way, forcing him to spend 3 of his Burning Abyss monsters to get rid of one of mine really helped me win that game. Submission for the Gnomes came in clutch today. Alright guys, I went 7-1-1. One, one. I ended up tying in the last round. I'm going to go in through each, each and every one of the rounds and tell you guys what happened. First round I played, he ended up getting 10th. He was a cool dude. He beat me 2-1. I breaked in game one. And then game three, he went first, knew I was playing. Uh, he knew I was playing PK Fire, so he went to Dweller. So I couldn't really do anything. Round two, I played Domain Monarchs. 2 0 them. Round three, I played the PK Fire Mirror Match. We had like a long game one, about 35 minutes. I ended up having to Corbage one of his Beatrices. 
and then attack over a Levier, break sword or something else. I got him down to a thousand life points. And then I actually misplayed because I had a fog blade in graveyard and a boots. And he was at a thousand life points. I was attacking directly. I could have banished the fog blade to summon the boots, attack for four hundred for two hundred more. That would have had him at eight hundred and I could have barbar for game. But I didn't do that because I, I knew it wouldn't kill him. And I was really looking for game right there. And so then he still had a thousand life points right out of the barbar's range. So I had to stall him out. He ended up summoning F0. I used Alex to negate the F0 and just attacked it with the gloves for game. Then game two, I just out-resourced him. So game two was pretty quick. Round four, I played Cosmo. Kaiju Cosmos, actually. 2 0 him. Round five, I played regular Cosmos. No, actually, this card in the Mize Cosmos. Yeah, so I remember I saw it in his main deck at one point. And then I 2 0 him. That, that was a tough matchup. That was not fun at all. I Twin Twister him like three times, cow capped all his back row. And that's really the key against card in the Mize decks. Cow capped the back row. And then push for game after that. F Zero put in work too. Round six, I played Cosmo as well. They mixed up our seats, so we got a time extension. And so I ended up winning game one. Then I um, I ended up winning game one, winning the F Zero, and he couldn't really get around that. Game two took so long, and then we ended up going into time, and I offered him the draw. But then he said, No, I'm trying to win. I need my invite. So I was like, Okay, man, good for you, but I'm going first game three. I set up my Beatrice, and he couldn't come back from that. All right, so round seven, I played Cosmos. He was a 2 0. But I wanted to give you guys some cool plays that actually happened in that match. And so, game one, he went first, and he summons a tin can, adds a forerunner to his hand, and passes. Sets no back row, that's it. And I opened up a pretty bad hand. So double twin twister, mass change, seer, and maxi. My sixth card was a fog blade. Now, I actually borrowed the Phantom Knight cards from a good friend of mine, Nick. And so, <laughs> I'm going to use another ultra rare effect negating trap card instead. And so, this is my hand, and I, I really could not allow him to resolve that tank hand again on my turn, so my only option was to attack it. So I just summoned this, I normal summon Seer, and attacked this tank hand, and then I just set, set the Fog Blade, and then set the Twin Twister, and then I set the Mass Change. And then on his next turn, well of course he chains to summon the Forerunner, and then on his next turn he tries to attack over my Seer, he summons another monster as well, and the I don't have anything in the graveyard, so Seer is dead. So what I ended up doing was I activated Fog Blade, targeting my own Seer so that he couldn't attack it. And then on my next turn, I drew a Graph, Normal Summoned it, went into Dante, and was able to set up my plays from there. And then he couldn't come back from that. So it was really cool have, having the Fog Blade, my own monster, to protect it from my opponent, just so I can make a play on my next turn. That was really cool. So in game two, I summon an F0 and I'm pushing a lot for damage with F0 because he had a Dark Destroyer out. And then I had set two Fog Blades and then a Twin Twisters. And at one point, I'm pushing with his Dark Destroyer and he summons a second Dark Destroyer in defense. So I attack over that with his Dark Destroyer and he summons a Slip Rider and he targets my Twin Twisters. So I don't want him to destroy Twin Twister because that's my out to his Cosmojo if he happens to draw it. So I Fog Blade a Slip Rider. Then on his next turn, he summons a Delta Shuttle and goes into Cyber Dragon Infinity. And then he activates Infinity's effect to take my um, F0 as material. And then I uh, I try to Fog Blade Infinity. But he negates that as well. So that gets destroyed. But he's already used Infinity's effect for the turn, which is important. So then he takes my F0 as material. I get both Dante's effect. And I get back a Skarm. And then a Seer. So then I activate my Twin Twisters. Targeting my Breakthrough skill. I mean my Fog Blade. And then I destroy that. Discard my Seer and I get back a Dante. Then I activate the Fog Blades effect in the graveyard after he attacks to bring back a Boots. Again, my friend has my Phantom Knights now, so this was the Boots. Then on my next turn, I normal summon the Gloves. I go into Break Sword, it's got 3000 attack. Then I just attack over the Infinity. I discard the Skarm to make Beatrice attack for 25. And after that, he just couldn't come back from losing the Cyber Dragon Infinity. I had Beatrice, got a Skarm Search, and I still had Break Sword on top of that. So that was actually a really cool play, Fog Blading my own, I mean, Twin Twistering my own Fog Blades in order to get their graveyard effects. That was just really cool, I thought. Round 8, I played Noah Green in round 8. It was crazy, he's playing Burning Abyss. So I opened up, I summoned Beatrice and two Dantes, and then it really, I used up a lot of my resources quickly early. And it really came down to who had more Farfas. He played Black Jack, 
Blackjack, whatever it's called. The thing that lets you excavate from the top of your deck. And fortunately, he milled a Farfa, and it was his third Farfa. So from there, he had used all his Farfas. I'd used both of mine. And so we're both trying to get back our Farfas and then see who can push for damage first. He, at one point, he summoned the Seer in defense. And then I knew that he was going to you know, bring back the Farfa, of course. So I used Korbot to spin back the, the Seer and then push for game through that. Game two, he went first. He summons his Beatrice and just Farfa'd my first Beatrice. That's usually how the mirror match goes. Whoever summons Beatrice first, Farfa's the other's Xyz monster, and then you win. So that's what he did. Then game three, I go first and summon my Beatrice, but then rather than Farfa'ing his monster, I sent Mischief for the Gnomes. And then with that, I, I, I didn't think he was going to be able to make a play, so he summoned three Burning Abyss monsters from his hand, summoned the Virgil, and then discarded something to spin my Beatrice back to my deck. I thought I had lost, but the fact that he spent four monsters to get rid of my Beatrice gave me enough advantage to win the game. It kind of sucked though because I max seed him. And so I drew a lot of cards. So on my next turn, I was taking my time trying to think through my plays. And I got a time warning actually, and that really kind of threw me off for a minute. But I mean, it all worked out. So round nine, the final round, I played against Cosmos once again. And game one was extremely competitive. It took about 35 minutes to complete the entire match. The entire game, I mean. And I pushed a lot with F-Zero. This put in a lot of work until eventually I was able to summon a Dark Law so I could attack over his monsters. And then once I got him low enough, I was able to Bar Bar for game. And in game two, he opened up really, really good. And we were in time. So he opened up Fire King Island, a ship, and then a Slip Rider. But rather than Slip Rider, it was Dark Destroyer. But still, he had the potential to do an extremely ridiculous combo. And so he does that, and he builds a board that I just could not get over with just a few turns left. And so since I won game one, and he won game two, we have to draw for that round. And so that was... It was actually really cool that we got the draw. I'm kind of happy that it worked out that way. Because he was a good player and a really nice guy. And so we both got the top since we drew because we're both X1 and 1. However, if one of us had lost, the other one wouldn't have been able to top. So if I had won, he wouldn't have topped. And if he had won, I wouldn't have topped. So it's awesome that we both got the top and got our invite to Nats. I'm pretty happy with my results for the weekend. Going 7-1-1 one, one at a 350 person regional is definitely pretty good. I and mean, that's something I can be pretty proud of. Like I only lost round 1 to a player who got 10th place. And then I won the next seven rounds, and then I tied round nine with the player who got eighth place. And so that's like, I and mean, that's awesome. And at the same time, I got to meet a lot of great people, pick up some new cards. And so, you know, it was just a great event overall. And so all that being said, thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate all of you guys' support. Like, all your likes and your comments, all of those things really drive me to get better pretty much every day. So I love seeing things like that. It really inspires me. And so thanks a lot to all of you for that. And so, um, here's the mat to prove it. There's the mat. You can see, like, the regional thing. It's pretty, this is a nice mat. But with that being said, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all later. Bye.